And now it's time for your Wednesday Word with JoLynn Whitaker. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's Wednesday Word. My name is Prophet JoLynn Whitaker, and I do have a fresh word from the Lord for you. Now, this word is really exciting because I know in my spirit that so many people are going to really receive what the Lord is getting ready to minister and then put yourself on the fast track to your future. God does not desire for you to stay where you are. He is a progressive God. He is a very intentional God. He wants to take you from glory to glory. And to that end, you know, we are currently, we remain under an anointing for acceleration. It has already been all over this ministry and also hitting the lives of many people who are connected to us and who the Lord is leading to receive these messages. It's got nothing to do with us. It's everything to do with the Lord and what he wants to do in many of your lives in this season. God wants to accelerate you. So I just want to decree and declare prophetically that you are not going to move forward at a slow pace. You are not going to struggle to move forward. You know, you may have been struggling or going slowly uh, to, to access the next level and, you know, just really struggling to do so up until now, but that is over in Jesus name. God wants to accelerate you. He wants to put you on the fast track to your future, to the next level, to the next dimension. And if that sounds good to you, then this is going to be your word. God has given me some revelatory information from the the script, the scriptures to, to really help us. And if we will mine these keys and then pay attention to them and really integrate them, uh, then we will absolutely access the fast track to the future. Praise God. Let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start by looking at a few, few bits and pieces regarding the apostle Paul. Now this apostle Paul was full of such incredible wisdom. Many believe, myself included, that his ability to pull revelatory information from the scriptures had everything to do with his history and his training as a scholar, but also with his unique anointing. And I absolutely believe that. He was very unique. His anointing manifested itself powerfully. Paul himself uh, was on the fast track in ministry. So if there's anybody that we can learn from, it it would absolutely be him. Uh, Once again, a few tidbits here. Paul wrote many books included in the New Testament. Now, some say it was eight books. Some scholars believe it was closer to 13 books. What we do know for sure is that Paul's background was unique and very relevant. He was formerly known as Saul of Tarsus, the the well-known Christian hunter and killer. He despised Christians uh, and he pursued and just you know, he made it his business. He was a Christian murderer, but he was also hand picked by God to step into a significant destiny and life assignment. And Paul, I tell you what, he absolutely did that. Now he was born a Roman citizen in Tarsus, which is now South Turkey. He grew up in Jerusalem and he diligently studied the Torah, catch this, under Gamaliel. And this man, Gamaliel, was an esteemed uh, Jewish uh, professor. Uh, He was in the Sanhedrin. Paul acquired what would have been the equivalent of multiple doctor degrees from like a Yale or a Harvard kind of environment. So he was highly, highly educated by the best of the best. By the way, Paul's family was highly wealthy and they invested in his education. As a result, Paul was highly educated. But something happened to to the, the, the man formerly known as Saul when he was on the road to Damascus. What happened was he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that encounter changed him from Saul of Tarsus into the esteemed apostle Paul, put him on the fast track to his future, to his purpose. Now, as a result of that Damascus road encounter with the Lord Jesus, this man, Saul, the Jewish scholar and Christian murderer, became the esteemed 
Apostle Paul, but catch this, at that time, he could not return to Jerusalem. He wanted to, but he couldn't go back there. He had just changed his whole life. There was going to be a lot of people that didn't get it. A lot of people that didn't understand. He knew he could not go to Jerusalem. So in Galatians 1 and 17, this is so important for you to catch as you seek to access the fast track to your future. In Galatians 1 and 17, we learn that although he wanted to go to Damascus, instead Paul changes course and he goes to Arabia. And many scholars believe that he was following the leading of the Lord. They believe he was following the leading of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because in Arabia, he goes to Mount Sinai, which is the very place that Moses went to get revelation from the Lord, to get instruction from the Lord. So rather than going where he wanted to go, rather than going where he planned to go, he changes his course and he goes where he should go according to the leading of the Lord. He spends time on Mount Sinai seeking God. Some say it was a three year period. Some believe it was longer than that. But what we do know is this, the man's path was altered and he allowed it to be so. He followed the Lord's leading and he put himself on the fast track. I have a question for you. How many times have you fought against what God told you to do? Oh, come on. You know, he told you to do something. You know, he told you to go somewhere. You know, he told you don't do that. Do this. How often have you done that? Or, or maybe, you know, someone who has, have you ever seen that God told you to do something, but you didn't want to, or you questioned it or you reasoned in your own mind why it didn't make sense or why it, maybe it wasn't necessary. But in the end, there's no telling how that type of behavior can alter our future, maybe even prevent us from accessing the fast track. You know, there are times when God needs you to be where you got to be in order to get a blessing. There are times when the Lord needs to see you radically obey in order for him to trust that you're going to radically obey in the future. Sometimes these things are a test, but sometimes it is simply a specific instruction designed to get you to be where you got to be, to have the encounter, to receive the blessing, to access your inheritance, to access the fast track. So obeying the Lord, allowing him to lead you is key. Let me nail this, nail this down and, and just really continue by showing you Genesis 12 and one, same thing. The Lord told Abram, get up, leave your country, go out from your land, go from your relatives and from your father's family, go to the country. I'm going to show you in Matthew two and 13, same thing happens um, again to Joseph. The Lord sends an angel to Joseph and the angel says, get up, get married, get the baby and go where I'm telling you to go because King Herod is looking for Jesus to kill him. So hear me, child of God, there are times when it is definitely about being in the right place at the right time. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you. You know, you heard the Lord tell you to do something, but it doesn't quite make sense in your head. Mm -mm, don't question it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. There are times it's absolutely about being in the right place at the right time to either again, to either receive an inheritance in this case here of Joseph and Mary and the baby to be protected. So there's going to be times too, when the Lord will try to get you out of harm's way. Amen. Now, let me just say this in the spirit of transparency, there have been two times so far in my own life when the Lord has told me to leave a career, to leave something that I was successfully doing and do something else. Now I want to, I want to, um, be careful to, to hone in on two aspects. Number one, both times I was successful in what I was doing. It's not like I was struggling. I didn't have any other reason to quit. I was doing well. I was succeeding, but both times when he told me to leave, he specifically said, stop doing this because I want you to do that. So he didn't call me out of something to just sit. 
He didn't call me out of something to just do nothing. No, it was leave this and go do this. God will be specific in his instructions when he's getting ready to put you on the fast track. And I can say with complete honesty, both times it was a hard decision. Well, it wasn't a hard decision. I knew I had to do it, but it wasn't easy to do because I was doing well in both careers. But both times absolutely put me on the fast track, absolutely blessed me above and beyond anything that, that I could have seen coming. When the Lord tells you to do something and gives you a specific instruction, your obedience is very critical. So the question for you in this moment would be, is there something that you know God told you to do, but you're not doing? Is there something the Lord has spoken to you that you need to get busy on? You need to get going and be obedient on. It could be the thing that will put you on the fast track. Amen. Now there's another key that I want to show you when it comes to being able to accessing the fast track to your future, the fast track to the next level. Let's go back to our esteemed apostle Paul for a moment, because this man is just a treasure trove of wisdom. Amen. So, um, so I, I love examining his life and in the, the books in the Bible that he wrote, because they're just, they're just so rich with wisdom and instruction. Amen. Paul said something very powerful in Philippians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. He was talking about uh, the pursuit of his purpose. He was talking about becoming all that God had called him to be and being successful at it. And, and here's what he said. He said, brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Wow, so much there. But he's talking about releasing the past, forgetting what lies behind. You know, there was a lot that was behind him. There was a lot that Paul could have been guilty about. He had done some really bad things. He had not been a good guy, man. He was not a nice guy for a long time, but he was willing to release that and let it go because he knew that unless he did, he would not be able to become who and what God was calling him to be. You say, well, Prophet Jolin, that's not easy for me to do. It's not easy for me to just let it go, just release it. I get it, but <laughs> hear me. If you will give those difficult memories to God, if you will give those difficult, all, all the guilt, all the difficult memories, your pain to the Lord, he can transform it. He can recycle it into wisdom. You know, that's why the Psalmist David said it was good that I was afflicted. Nobody wants to go through hard seasons. Nobody wants to know that they've made mistakes and had failures in, in their life. But if you'll let God, he will transform it into wisdom and you will realize like David, that you got some good out of it because you learn some things and you gain some wisdom, you gain some perspective that you could not have gained any other way. Being willing to let go of what lies behind you will directly impact whether or not you can access the fast track. What lies behind you? A failed relationship, personal mistakes, personal failures, even personal, maybe a childhood that was hard, abuse in your childhood, betrayal, maybe even by your own family. But being willing to release that to God, being willing to say, you know what, Lord, I, I, I'm going to release it to you because I want to lay hold of my future. I want to reach forward to what lies ahead. I want all that you have for me in the future. I can't live in the past and still lay hold of the future. That will have everything to do, my friend, with whether or not you're going to access that fast track. And let's be clear. Some of us really are still living in the past. You look at the social media accounts of some people, you can absolutely tell where their head is and where their heart is. All they post, all they, all they talk about, it's obviously they're just still living in the pain of what they went through. 
And I'm not saying that, you know, the experiences weren't painful. I'm not saying they didn't have an impact on you. But I am saying that if you want to access the fast track, you got to make up your mind that you're going to give that to God and let him recycle it for you so that you can lay hold of your future. Amen. You're going to come out of the pain. Oh yes, you're going to come out of the pain. You're going to let the Lord heal your heart because when you are healed of the past, that's when you can access the fast track to your future. Amen. Oh, come on, say amen. Now, all the while, you got to be seeking the Lord. You know, you, you can't ask the Lord to allow you to access the fast track and you're not even seeking him. You got to seek God. You got to put him first in your life. You got to put him and his kingdom and righteousness first. In other words, you got to live right. You got to love God. You got to keep Jesus first and foremost in your life. Seek him in all you do. Your life should you your, and your whole life needs to be a walking testimony as to the goodness of God. So that when people look at you, they're like, mm, that person's very joyful. They're very positive. They've always got a wise word. They must be Christian. Let your life just emanate the beauty and the goodness of God. Amen. Now this is Matthew 6 and 33, seeking first his kingdom, his righteousness. And then the scripture says, Everything you need will be added to your life. What a gift. What a wonderful gift. You know, that's your daily provision. That is your stability. That is your provision, your security. But let's be clear. God has so much more for you than, than I don't want to say just that because that that's huge, but there's more. According to Hebrews 11 and six, the word of God says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you seek first the kingdom of God is righteousness, everything you need, your stability, your security, everything you need to stabilize your life will be given to you. But on, on top of that, in addition to that, God will reward you. God is a rewarder and a blesser of those who diligently seek him. And that will put you on the fast track. When, when the Lord sees that he's got somebody who puts him first, you love him, you allow him to just saturate your life. That's somebody he knows he can move forward. That's someone he knows he can work with. That is one of your keys to getting on the fast track. Seek God first, put him first. So here is the formula we have outlined in today's message. And this is a formula that can put you on the fast track to your future as you shift into the next dimension. Amen. Number one, discern the voice of God, listen to the voice of God, and then obey it. When you hear God tell you to go somewhere or to do something, do it. Obey the Lord. Proverbs three and five, do not lean on your own understanding. Let God tell you what to do. Let him be your boss. You got to obey God. Praise God. Mm. Number two, seek the Lord and allow him to order your steps. Psalm 37 and 23. Let God order your steps. The steps of a good man and woman are ordered by the Lord. God will lead you to the right places, the right connections, the right people, the right assignments, the right blessings, the right opportunities, the right doors. Let God order your steps. And when you hear him and you know it's God telling you to go somewhere or do something, obey. It's more than likely going to give you access to the fast track. Praise God, because the Lord rewards those who diligently seek him. Praise God. Number three, let go of what is behind you. Philippians 3 and 13, make up in your mind and in your spirit that you will not live in the past because you want to access the future and you want to do so at an accelerated pace. Number four, believe that God is going to reward you. Believe that good things have been created for you. Believe that God has a plan for you and those plans are good. Believe that I have not seen nor ear heard the things that he's got planned for you. Hebrews 11 and six. And then number five, get ready. 
get ready to accelerate, get ready to get on the fast track to the future. That is a formula that I've helped many people to use in order to access the fast track. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you are next. You are next. So that's five points. Five is the biblical number of grace. I decree and declare in the mighty and forever matchless name of Jesus Christ, you are graced to accelerate. You are graced to shift mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Thereby, you are graced to step onto and to access the fast track to your future. Let everybody with faith to receive it, say amen in Jesus' name. Well, I look forward to getting your praise reports. Um, I'm praying for you always. If you need prayer, don't hesitate to write to my ministry for prayer. Stay with me. I have another short message for you. Hello, everybody. This is Prophet JoLynn Whitaker with a special invitation to you to join me this coming Saturday, November 17th, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time for a special prophetic word the Lord has laid on my heart to just speak into the atmosphere and release over your life. Now, it's going to be motivational, it will be inspirational, but definitely a very highly prophetic word, which means it will be saturated with the dunamis of God, the power of God able to impact your atmosphere, your life. You gotta get this word. Now, I find it very interesting because this is actually the second year in a row that God has given me a word for you on my birthday. So yes, this Saturday, November 17th is actually my birthday, but isn't that just the way God is? No better time for me to bless you because every single day I'm so blessed and so honored to simply serve the Lord. Amen. So once again, this Saturday, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we will be live streaming simultaneously on YouTube, also on Periscope. You are invited to join me for this special uh, birthday broadcast as I release uh, a prophetic word in season over your life. Thank you. I'll see you there. In spring of 2011, I made one of the most momentous decisions of my life. I followed the voice of God and the very specific instructions of the Lord and went to a little broken down lake house where I would begin a brand new season of my life. It was a date with destiny. It was there at that lake house that the Lord would speak to me powerfully, give me instruction and revelation for breaking generational curses, uh, engaging in victorious supernatural warfare, even accelerating my preparation for purpose, for love, for marriage. It was a date with destiny. You know, the Lord loves us just that much. He wants us to to grow and to be able to step into everything that he has for us. I believe that many of you are in transition right now. Maybe you are actually in the midst of your own date with destiny and the Lord is wanting to prepare you for breakthrough to access what he's got for you in the next season. Maybe you just need to benefit from the strategy that I learned in that broken period of my life. You see, I learned that there could be purpose and happiness, fulfillment and new joy, even after loss and grief. I would love to get this book into your hands. I believe it's time for you to have your own date with destiny. You can grab your own copy at datewithdestinybook.com or my primary website, jolynwhitaker.org. I would love to send you a copy.